FizzFest is really a training workshop for graduate students. And the idea behind it is that students are taught all these things about how to become effective teachers, how to do research, and they're exposed to the research that their lab does, but they're not really exposed to things, to basically other techniques and other things that are happening in the field at other universities. And so the goal behind FizzFest is really to broaden graduate students, the techniques that they're exposed to, and to interact with a variety of other students, and to network with both students and faculty, and get together and have a good time and talk about ecophysiology. I don't know how big of a branch we need, but like, here's, like that one looks pretty healthy. At FizzFest in 2018, we had spoken with Dr. Juliana Medeiros at Holden Arboretum, and one of the questions we were interested in asking was trying to quantify changes in light energy gradients through a vertical canopy profile, and then also look at physiological differences amongst different species in a mixed forest environment. The reason Holden is a unique opportunity for FizzFest is because the research tools, the canopy walk, and the tower. So having access to the canopy is unique. There are scientific research tools like this, but not many. And this is the only canopy walk and tower in Northeast Ohio. For FizzFest in 2018, we wanted to give the student participants some insight and training into four different eco-physiological themes. And those themes were gas exchange. So in the gas exchange group, students are interested in understanding differences in photosynthesis and photosynthetic rates amongst different species and based on different canopy positions. Another research group is the fluorescence group. And fluorescence is an indication of the efficiency at which plants can harvest and utilize light energy to turn it into the chemical energy associated with photosynthesis. So students in the fluorescence group look at energy spectrums and energy gradients associated with harvesting light. The third research group was the, the thermal and leaf spectral properties group. And students uh, in these groups were provided hands-on experiences associated with using thermal cameras to understand temperature gradients in canopies and within individual leaves, as well as hyperspectral cameras to look at gradients of light that exist inside forest canopies and a variety of other multi-spectral tools that are available to ecophysiologists. And the fourth research group is the hydraulics group. And the hydraulics group provided insight and training into understanding how water is transported through plants, and more importantly, potentially to understand how different species and different tissues are susceptible to drought and susceptible to changes in water potential stress. And uh, so the hydraulics group had a lot of hands-on training with measuring the, the different mechanisms by which water is moved through both leaves and stems. Sort of two main ideas have come out of the work this week. The first was the idea that we had originally, was the idea that if you look across the tree canopy from the top to the bottom, what you see is at the top of the canopy, it's very sunny and hot and windy. And at the bottom of the canopy, it's damp and cool and dark. And so some groups are measuring things like photosynthetic rate um, or fluorescence. Our group is basically using these cameras, especially the hyperspectral camera, to scan leaves across all these very fine wavelengths of reflected light to see how leaf uh, chemistry and structure essentially manifest and changes in these reflectances from these different heights. We're collecting top of canopy sunlit samples from these uh, red oak species out here so that we can take hyperspectral images of them so we can discern things like how healthy the leaves are, their greenness, how they're photosynthesizing, and there's another group down there with their Lycor machines that are going to measure how much CO2 is passing in and out of the leaves and how much photosynthesis they're conducting. We want to get top of canopy samples because they're sunlit and those are the powerhouses of the trees because they're packed full of different chemicals and nutrients and components that allow plants to photosynthesize. And since they're up at the top of the canopy, they're not shaded by any other tree species, so they're gonna have the most power to be able to do the most photosynthesis 
<laughs> Mad skills. That's why we need a big grass. That's number two. Okay. The, the idea that grew completely novel out of their experience here was um, a study on beech leaf disease. So it's an emerging disease that's actually being studied here at Holden Arboretum. And the students noticed that the leaves, the disease actually looks like it's in between the leaf veins. And being people who study water and veins, they said, ooh, I wanna look at this. So they decided to look at infected and uninfected branches. And they've looked at how much water the branch might be able to use. And they've done thermal imaging to see if the different sections of the leaf that are infected and uninfected have different water relations or different temperatures. We are out here on the canopy um, of the, at the Holden Arboretum. And we are looking at some sort of damaging disease that's happening to beech trees here. So we're using this fluorometer. It's a piece of equipment that looks at um, how photosynthesis is working within the leaf. So what we're doing is we're flashing light on the leaf and then some of that light is getting returned back to our system which is picking that up to figure out how much damage is happening on the chlorophyll uh, within the leaf. If you, yeah, if you get, if you look at them uh, from underneath, you can see like a, clearly a healthy leaf, but then the, you can see the striations here of a clear uh, pathogen damage, and so we're measuring both the healthy portion, healthy leaves, but then also healthy and damaged portion of infected leaves to just uh, get a better feel for how. Uh, the pathogen is affecting the physiology. Student participants at FizzFest are exposed to all of these unique training opportunities, but one of the main outcomes that we are aiming for with this meeting is a sense of camaraderie within the field, the ability to build a new networking experiences, new interactions with other plant ecophysiologists that are working in the United States. So to provide them with new technical training on some of these state-of-the-art tools, but just as importantly to work together in a team format to collect data, to build new friendships, to build new collaborations of networking, and then hopefully through time to continue to grow these relationships as the students develop their professional careers. One of the exciting things about FizzFest is that we're creating collaborations for the future. These students are going to take these friendships and these collaborations on into the future and do some really cool science, I think. A meeting like FizzFest wouldn't be possible without amazing support from a variety of people. The National Science Foundation has provided meeting support for FizzFest and their continued support is, is very appreciated. In addition, the, our local host, host, the Holden Arboretum, have been invaluable just in terms of letting us have access to this amazing site, in addition to the many other ways that they've supported us through the meeting. And then we've also enjoyed corporate sponsorship from Meter, um, from Lycor, from PMS Instruments, the New Phytologist Trust, and the ESA Ecophysiological Section. Without support from NSF Holden and these corporate sponsors, a meeting like this wouldn't be possible.